Takashi Tezuka. Wait a second, you don't know who this guy is? Well, I can't blame you. He has always been the Luigi of game design, so to say. Always hidden behind the shadow of his much more important and bigger brother, Mario. Well, actually, that being Shigeru Miyamoto in this case, everyone knows who Shigeru Miyamoto is. He's the guy that created Mario, Zelda, he's a living legend. But Takashi Tezuka is just as important as Miyamoto, but no one ever talks about him. Mamma mia, come on, talk about, talk about Takashi Tezuka as well. He's an amazing game director. He has worked either as director or producer for so many first-party Nintendo games, like almost every Zelda game, from the first Zelda to Link's Awakening to Ocarina of Time. He is the art director of Super Mario. He created Yoshi and the Boo enemies and so much more. Like, if Mario is what it is today, if it looks what it looks today, then it's all thanks to this amazing man. And he is also, of course, the producer of Super Mario Bros. Wonder! Ho ho! Yup, he is. And in fact, he was interviewed recently and he said some pretty interesting things about Mario Wonder that hyped me up quite a bit. An interviewer from IGN asked Takashi Tezuka where did the idea for Super Mario Bros. Wonder start? And Takashi Tezuka replied, when we were thinking about creating this new 2D Mario, there were two concepts that we held. The first concept is the freedom to choose, and the second one is the idea that it's packed with secrets and mysteries. And this idea of secrets and mysteries, I think the original Super Mario Bros. was exactly that, but as we continued to create Mario games, this idea of secrets and mysteries started to become standard or something expected. That was a challenge that we saw, and so in order to overcome this challenge, there's something we tried. What we did was, in Mario games, you know when Mario goes down a pipe you can go to the underground area or if it climbs the vines you can go to the sky area well we thought what can we do to create an updated version of that so one idea that came up was when you use an item you're taken to a different area and so when we created a prototype we thought well even if you're just taking the item you're transported to somewhere else that's the same can't you just change the place as it is right now when i heard that i said Let's just go all the way, let's just change the entire screen. So that's where we ended up testing out ideas like the warp pipe squiggling around, or the entire screen tilting and slanting, or having to travel on top of a horde of enemies. And it really was the starting point of wonder. Now, I think this part of the interview is actually quite interesting, because they talk about unexpectancy and secrets, like a reason why I find secrets interesting and fun in games is because they lead to something unexpected, something that you will not see coming in a million years, something that you're like, wow, this thing is in the game, wow, I didn't know that. That's the kind of secrets that are exciting, but most of the secrets in Mario game, if you think about it, boil down to just warps, just, oh, now in a, I'm in a different world, I guess, oh, cool, this is a new stage with the same mechanics as the old stages, but it's a new stage, okay, that's fine. Like, what makes a Mario game exciting is when you find a secret and it leads to something completely new that you just can't see elsewhere, and I believe the wonder effect is just that, because the wonder effect is unique to each stage, which means that as soon as you enter a stage, maybe you will get the excitement of already knowing you're going to see something new and exclusive that you will not find elsewhere, and that might be even more rewarding when you get an, a secret exit, because getting a secret exit means, hey, I haven't just unlocked a new stage, yeah, yeah, a secret stage but it's just like the old stage but hey it's a secret stage ho 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 no you will have found a new wonder effect you are excited to see what's what that's all about i think that's genius the game's director shiro muri after takashi came up with the idea of the wonder flower replied yes that's exactly what i was thinking is he serious and to really bring that to fruition i thought he can't be the only one coming up with ideas so i started to solicit ideas from the entire team and if i were to give it a number of ideas that we came up i'd put it at 1000 or even 2000 ideas that came up and from within those ideas we whittled it down to the ones that had potential created prototypes and then take a look and then from there we will think oh no we should have just done this this way or that other way and that's how these wonders came about 
Man, if it is true that they came up with 1000 or even 2000 ideas, it means that it might be quite fun to actually work at Nintendo. Because can you like imagining the brainstorming session for so many ideas? Like everyone bringing his ideas and then the whole team considering them and taking out the best ones. Man, that might be so exciting. Man, I wish I worked at this game. But yeah, this I think speaks a lot about how Nintendo creates a game. Like, to a certain degree, Nintendo has to give freedom to its developers. I mean, there's always Shigeru Miyamoto coming in just to take a coffee, and he will always change things and be extremely severe and precise because he wants his vision of Mario to be fulfilled. But at the end of the day, if you want cool ideas, you just need to let people go insane, to give them the freedom of creativity, to just give them an environment where they can express themselves freely. That's like the only way you can like encourage creativity and fun and interesting ideas and innovation, of course. Takashi Tezuka then added, I wasn't forcing them to do anything impossible, and at the time we didn't have a deadline for the end of development, so let's do what we can do. And I purposely didn't want anyone to have any sort of negative reaction and say, we don't have the time to do that, so we did not set a timeline. Okay, I'm actually super happy that Takashi Tezuka decided to not put a deadline when they started developing the game, because if you think about it, like, imagine yourself to be a game designer, and someone tells you, hey, this game has to be done in one year, you have two years, or one year and a half, and you gotta do it, then you're like, oh god, oh crap, let's come not up with good ideas, let's, let's throw all the wacky and maybe two different difficult ideas to realize out of the window. You will be afraid to propose an idea that might take too much time and might be worthless. Like, a deadline in terms of time might limit creativity quite a lot, even though Majora's Mask says otherwise. <laughs> But yeah, if you want to create an environment where everyone can just express his wacky ideas without fearing like any backlash or, any, or, or anyone tells you Hey, what the hell are you doing? Come on! It's a too long! It's impossible! What are you talking about? So yeah, that's the kind of environment you need when you want to go all, all, all creative, all crazy with a game. You just need no deadline. At least in the beginning. Then once everything is decided and you start working on it, then you can start to set a deadline. But the current video game industry is having the problem that games are taking longer and longer to be produced. That's kinda sad. I mean, there are plenty of videos that talk about this issue of games, especially AAA games, becoming too big, too expensive. It takes much more time and effort because technology is, is evolving. So things studios might do is just use previous assets to create a new game, just like Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, or just do smaller projects. Or if you just want to be like crazy and do it in the worst way possible, you just rush games just for the sake of making games. And I am absolutely not referring to what Game Freak is doing these days. Absolutely not. Like, I'm so sad. Like, Nintendo Switch is such an amazing console. Revolutionary Mario games, amazing Zelda, even Kirby got a 3D game. It's every, every Nintendo series, even Metroid, like, except Donkey Kong, unfortunately. There are so many Nintendo series that are, that just came on the Switch and they blew up in terms of scope, imagination, creativity, ambition. But Pokemon kinda just, whoop, fell on his knees. And now it's getting some patches on his knees because it's bleeding. And now Game Freak is crying because the Pokemon company forces Game Freak to make games every two seconds. And that's so sad. But yeah, that's not the case for Mario. Apparently, they decided to not set a deadline just to go all out with creativity. And that's great. And if you think about it, man, they have been working on this game for quite a long while. Like... This game is basically coming out at the end of the Nintendo Switch Live, and it's, it is completely unusual to get a 2D Mario so late in a new console's life. Usually in 2D Mario's like, 
a game of the first two or three years after the after the console has been released because it's an important title. The 2D Mario is the one that's gonna sell, you gotta produce it super quick, but no, they decided to take their time and it's now releasing basically at the end of Nintendo Switch's lifespan. This means I have good hope that this game will be as polished as we can hope it to be and not a cheap, rashed new Super Mario Brothers. So guys, did you already know who Takashi Tezuka is? Are you hyped for Super Mario Bros. Wonder? Do you believe the game will live up to the potential explained in this interview? Or do you think this game will actually fail miserably? Or maybe this game will even become the game of the year, surpassing Baldur's Gate 3, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, and many, many more. Or maybe no, that will just be a good game and they will forget about it. Or it will be amazingly fun and cool and it will be become a classic. I don't know guys, what do you guys think this game will actually be like? Even though it's like coming out in 4 days, so yeah. It's just a matter of seconds. You might be watching this video maybe when the game already released. If that's the case, oh well thank you. Even though it might be kind of pointless. But it's still interesting to see what happened behind the scenes of this game. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, leave a like and ring the cat bell. Meow meow. Hoo -hoo. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Mario, for making the outro. And ho ho, Luigi's here too. <laughs> Can I say something? No, Luigi, I don't really need you now. What's up? Oh no, ho ho, Mario. What are you doing? W what is Mario doing? Hey, I'm just gonna take the elephant fruit. Ho ho. W what is going on there? <laughs>